So in this video, I want to talk a little bit about the Argand diagram. So the Argand diagram. So what's an Argand diagram? Well, first, let me draw a picture. So here's my picture. So you've got two axes, one horizontal and one vertical. And we call the horizontal axis the uh, real axis. So I'll denote that by x. And the vertical axis is called the imaginary axis. We're going to denote it by y. So this is called an Argand diagram, also called the complex plane. By the way, even though this is called an Argand diagram, Argand did not invent it. The first man to actually describe or, or give a geometric interpretation of complex numbers in a complex plane was actually a uh, Danish-Norwegian mathematician called Kasper Vessel. So really we should be calling this a Vessel diagram, but the rest of the world calls it the Argand diagram. So I'll stick to that for now. So how do, we how do we plot complex numbers on the Argand diagram? Well, let's say that my complex number is 3 plus 4i. Well, let me, let me first just label these axes with numbers. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4 on the horizontal axis. Likewise, I've got minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4 in the negative direction. And for the imaginary axis, I'll do exactly the same thing. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, I've also got minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. So how do I plot, let's say my complex number is 3 plus 4i. So this is a complex number with the real part 3 and imaginary part 4. So how do I plot this complex number on this Argand diagram? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Notice that the real part is 3, so the real part of this complex number is 3. So I go along 1, 2, 3. And also my imaginary part is 4. So I go along 1, 2, 3 and up 1, 2, 3, 4. So if I put a cross here, that is the complex number uh, z equals 3 plus 4i. And that's all there is to it. So you notice that this is very similar to the Cartesian plane where we plotted x and y coordinates in the same way. We had an x coordinate and a y coordinate. In this case, you can think of the x coordinate as being the real part. Well, that is what it means. The x coordinate is the real part. And the y one is just the imaginary part. So likewise, 1 plus i, would, we would go along 1 and up 1. 10 i, or rather, 10 plus 11 i would be along 10 and up 11. Okay, so that's really all there is to it. So let's look at some examples of this. So you'll see below, I've already drawn an Argand diagram for you. So let's plot these complex numbers. Well, our first complex number is 1 plus i. So I've got to go along 1 and up 1. So let's change it to a different color. This is the number 1 plus i. So that's 1 plus i. How about the number 1 minus i? Well, that means I go across 1 and down 1, because this, the imaginary part of this number is minus 1. So I go across 1 and down 1. So this is 1 minus i. So I've done these two. How about minus 1 plus i? Well. I go to the left, minus 1, because that's the real part. I go to the left, minus 1, and up 1, because the imaginary part is 1. So I've got minus 1 plus i here. This corresponds to this complex number. How about minus 1 minus i? Well, the real part is minus 1, so I go to the left, minus 1. And the imaginary part is also minus 1, so I go down to minus 1. So that's minus 1 minus i. You'll notice that uh, this follows a, a nice sort of uh, symmetry here, and we'll explore this further when you talk about roots of unity, but it's not important for now. So how about 2i? Well, 2i is, has a real part of 0 and an imaginary part of 2. So 2i is just here. Remember, it's 0 plus 2i, real part of 0 and imaginary part of 2. So all I do is go up by 2, so that's 2i. Well, how about 3i? Well, 3i is exactly the same thing. It has a real part of 0 and an imaginary part of 3. So I just go up 1, 2, 3. So this point in the complex plane corresponds to 3i. So that's how we plot complex numbers on the Argand diagram.